he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps. Okay? So Jesus said that Lazarus was sleeping. Now watch this now. And then it says, but I go there that I might wake him up. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let's also go that we may die with him. Because see, Jesus is going to go back there. They were going to kill Jesus. They were going to kill Jesus. He wanted to go return there. And they says, don't go back there. They're going to kill you. So Thomas is saying, Lord, we're going to go with you because we love you and we'll die with you. Because where he's going, they were going to stone him before, Jesus. But he's going to go back to prove something. He's going to go back to wake, to wake Lazarus up. It's not what you think, Mike. So then it says, so, so then it says in, oh, I saw what happened. So however, Jesus spoke uh, of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead in verse 14. So Lazarus had died. And he lays in the tomb for four days. Now, let me ask you, if people claim that when you die, you go to heaven, Lazarus could have come back alive and wrote a book this thick on what heaven was like. Don't you think? Wow, you wouldn't believe what I saw up there. Four days being with God. If you go straight there, he never went. In fact, Lazarus lived 15 years longer before he died the second time. Okay? And he never once said what heaven was like because he didn't go to heaven. Okay? He went straight to the grave like the Bible says, and he was starting to decay. In fact, when Jesus got there, what was so beautiful, if you read the story, in fact, I almost started crying again this morning reading it because Jesus wept. That's when Jesus wept. When Martha and Mary came to him, Martha fell at a, came up to Jesus and said, If only you were here, my brother would still be alive. If only you were here. And Jesus said, Well, do you believe he will be resurrected? And Martha said, Yes, on the resurrection morning, in the future, when you come. We know he will be. And Martha left and snuck inside and told Mary. And Mary comes running out and she falls at his feet and she's crying. And her love for her brother and that Jesus' love for her and saw Martha and him, he started crying. And that's when the Bible said Jesus wept. And, the, and the, those people that were watching said, look how much he loved Lazarus. So he tells them, he says, just roll the stone away. So he's telling them to roll the stone, and Mary says, yeah, but Lord, he's been buried for four days, and he's starting to stink. And he says, roll the stone away. And as he rolled the stone away, Jesus called out Lazarus. And Lazarus came forth out of the tomb, wrapped in all the gauze, and he came forth, and Jesus told them to unwrap him. Wasn't that great? Jesus raised Lazarus. The only time anybody has ever been resurrected in the Bible, Jesus did it. Satan did. He's going to impersonate somebody, but he's not going to be able to raise because he's a liar and he's a cheat. He's the father of lies. But let's go on. It says, how did Jesus speak of death? Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. So when you die, you are asleep. Let's examine exhibit 2.1. Look at exhibit 2. Let's look at point one real quick. Sleep is a beautiful illustration of death. It's like going to bed at night when we are tired with assurance of walking in the morning. Assurance of waking in the morning. Thank you, Linda. This takes the fear out of death. You guys, you've got to understand something. Has anybody ever here or anybody online has ever gone to bed at night and t eight hours passed just like this? And you wake up and it's like, oh my goodness, eight hours, it's gone. You know, I sat by my sister and up in Chattanooga here where she died four, three or four years ago. And I sat with her for 15 hours until she passed. And I know that when she wakes up, she'll meet Jesus. And it would be just when she laid there and went to sleep. She'll know the last thing she was talking to me. And then she was gone. Last night I was tired and I went to bed at 1030. And I woke up this morning at, at 530. 
and it passed this fast. It passed this fast. I was tired, and it went quick. And I woke up, and I said, oh, my goodness, I need a couple more hours. But I didn't know anything. And all those hours passed, and that's exactly what's going to happen when Lazarus died for four days. Jesus raised him, and, and, and all of those who fall asleep, and it says here, they lie down to sleep with the quiet assurance that Jesus will awaken them in the morning of the resurrection at his second coming. Then it says death is called sleep. At least 55 times in the Bible, we are to regard it as a, a sound, dreamless sleep. A person may have been in the tomb a thousand years, but when raised at the resurrection, it will be seem, seem to him that he merely dozed off for a moment. When angels meet God's resurrected saints at their graveside sides in Matthew 24, 31, it will be like a loving mother greeting her child after a brief nap. I don't know if you guys know, but you all have a garden angel right with us all the time. Rejoicing today is talking about reading from God's word. And if something were to happen to you that you die, your angel will be at the tomb staying with you the whole time till you're resurrected. Isn't that a comforting thought? Yeah. Let's look at this. Do people have immortality now? Do we have immortality now? No. What are we called? We are mortal. That means mortal means subject to death, subject to die. No, we don't. When will God's people receive immortality? 1 Corinthians 15, 51, and 55. Let's go there real quick. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55. And I want to look at I want to look at, uh, I wanna look at verse 51, and let's read it through 55. It says there, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, at that last trumpet, for the trumpet would sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must be put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corrupt, corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? Isn't that a great passage? When they are raised at Jesus' coming. God's people do not have immortality now, but do they have eternal life? Do you have eternal life? The Bible says yes. Let's read it. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5, 12. Go to 1 John. I love this passage. 1 John chapter 5, Verse 12. Now, where is 1 John at? Before 2 John and after Peter. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. We're going to chapter 5, right? 1 John chapter 5. Let's look at verse 12. This is one of my favorite passages. It says, it says there, everybody online watching, it says uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 12. He who has the Son of Law... He who has life, no, it says, he who has the Son has life. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God 
does not have life. Watch this, you guys. I want to keep reading a second. Look at this. It says, these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. God wants you to know that you have it. And that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. And look at verse 14. Now this is the confidence. You can have the confidence that we have an approaching God in Him. That we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. Isn't that great? In, in, in John, the Gospel of John, Jesus uh, John says, if you ask, Jesus, it's in red. He says, you ask anything in my name, I will give it to you. Wow. Isn't that a great passage? You guys, you stay with me. We're closing up on here. Yes, you do have eternal life. How about number 19? Satan's hoax about death. Let's look at that. 19, what lie about death did Satan tell Eve in the Garden of Eden? What did he say, remember? Genesis 3, 4, you shall not surely die. You're not going to die. Eat that apple, you'll be like gods. Right? Ye shall not surely die. Wow. Why does Satan want people to believe that the dead are alive and can be contacted? Why? So you'll be lied to. That's right. In fact, it says right here, look at this. It says um, in Revelation 16, 14, it said, let's go there. Revelation 16, 14, real quick. Revelation 16, verse 14, For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So there are spirits of demons performing miracles. Performing miracles. So if devils perform miracles, then miracles in themselves are no proof that it's God at work. Is that true? If devils perform miracles, just because I see a miracle, that doesn't mean it's God working. We need to be careful. We need to follow the, the guidelines of the Bible. Always know your Bible. This, 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 this lesson we are doing today is so critical for God's people at the end of time and the world. Satan will use. In fact, look what he says here. So his angels can pose as spirits of the dead and deceive people. How would he deceive? How did the devil try to deceive Jesus? Well, he appeared as an angel of light, didn't he? So he, he didn't come to him as, and you know what, if, if Satan came in now and had horns, a pitchfork, and breathing fire, and say, you guys bow down to me. Who would bow down? Come on, you guys. I wouldn't bow down, would you? No, but he's going to appear as an angel of light or a friendly, loving pastor who's going to deceive you because you don't know the Bible. Do you see what I'm saying? 2 Corinthians 11. Let's go there. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 11 real quick. 2 Corinthians 11. And let's go to verse 14 and verse 15. You guys, this, is, this one here wasn't in our lesson, but it's a fantastic passage. Look at this one here. It says, And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing of his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works. That's what they're doing. 
And that's why it's so important to know when the dead go into the grave, they're not alive. Your loved one's coming back, and they're talking to you and telling you that God made changes. In the Bible, what does Malachi say about God? God says, I change not. I'm not going to change. His Sabbath doesn't change. It's part of the commandments. You know what's interesting? I can't go there. I, I can't go there because I, it's another subject, and then I'm going to be here for 10 minutes tell you. If you guys stay with me, I'm going to try to wrap this up, okay? You want to keep going? The reason I wanted to keep going is, you guys, because I'm not going to be here next week. What's that? We are close, aren't we? Okay, let's keep going. Fallen Christendom is referred to as Babylon in Revelation. What does God say is largely responsible for its fall? What's that? Babylon has fallen. Babylon has fallen, has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit. Christendom is falling because Satan has gained access to the churches through his falsehood that the dead are alive. In all too many cases, messages from Satan's missionaries who pose as spirits of the dead are welcome as marvelous counsel of the churches from the redeemed in glory. This gives Satan full power to deceive, and he makes every contact count. No wonder the apostle Paul so solemnly warned against such deception in 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. Okay. 22, according to Revelation, these same evil angels, posing as spirits of the dead, approach the kings and leaders of the earth. What is the result? Let's go to Revelation 16. Go to Revelation 16 with me. Now, Revelation, if you're not sure where Revelation is, it's in the back of the Bible. The last, the last book. Okay. Okay, it says Revelation 16. Let's look at verse, chapter 16 and let look at verse 13 and 14. It says here, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They are, all, they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Now, I wonder why God used frogs. You know, what does, how does a frog catch its prey? With tongues. Oh, with, yeah, with tongues. <laughs> okay. I figured you guys would catch that. Rivet, yeah, exactly. Revelation 18, 23. Let's go there. Revelation 18, 23. And it says there, the light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall not be heard you anymore. For your merchants were the great men of the earth. For by your sorcery, all the nations were deceived. Let me tell you, is Satan going to try to deceive you with sorcery? And it has to do with the state of the dead. You know, by their sorceries were all nations deceived. They gathered them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. An important test. Here it is, you guys. From what sources, from what sources only should I receive my information on the subject of the death? Come on, you guys. You know, there's a lot of people out there talking about the state of the dead and where they're at. But it's not coming from God's word. What God wants you to do, he looks at it and he says, why don't you come to me? 
and find out about, about your loved one who's died? Why do you go to someone else? Why do you go to the demons? Why do you go to Satan? Why do you go to other people? Why don't you come to me? And I'll show you just like we did today. We're looking at his word and we're following him and he's telling us exactly what it is. Yeah. She was wrong. Went to the witch of Endor and uh, um, what did he do after that? He killed himself, didn't he, with his own sword. Isaiah 8, 19 and 20. From what sources should I receive my information on the subject of death? Go to Isaiah, please. Let's look at Isaiah. Those online, look in Isaiah with me. <clears throat> That's right. And I want you to look at 19 and 20. It's one of my favorite passages. I want you to go to Isaiah 8. And I want you to look at 19 and in verse 20. And then it says there in 19... It says here, and when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards, who whisper and mutter, should not a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? To the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Oh, you guys. Test everything with God's word. Aren't these great passages, you guys? Should not a people seek unto their God? If they speak not according to the word, it is because there's no light in them. Revelation says, those who obey God will enter in his kingdom. Who will be among those shut out? Revelation 22, 15. Let's go there with me. Revelation 22. Let's go to verse 15. It said, first of all, in verse 14, let's go to 14. Blessed are those who do his commandments and that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexual immoral and murderers and adulterers and whoever loves and practices a lie. Wow, you guys. They're the sorcerers. Without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and adulterers. Wow. Witchcraft, which claims to contact the dead, is called in the Bible one of the works of the flesh for which people will be shut out of God's kingdom. How should I relate to it? How should you relate to it? Let's look at Galatians. Now, where is Galatians in the Bible? Old Testament or New Testament? It's in the New Testament, and it's right after 2 Corinthians. Yeah, we have Galatians, Galatians 5, 19. Let's go to 5, verse 19. We're almost done. We've got a few minutes. It said Galatians 5, 19 through 21. It says right here, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, and lewdness, idolatrous, sorcery, hatred, uh, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, and heresies, evil, murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not enter the kingdom of God. Sorceries with the, that's right, exactly. 
Those who can consult the dead, sorceries, will be shut out of heaven. In Moses' day, it says in Moses' day, God commanded that such be stoned. That's in Leviticus 26. It says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of the darkness, but rather reprove them. It is good. That's right. So when somebody is, is being dishonest or they say something that's, not in, that's against God, the Bible says um, works of darkness, but rather reprove them means show them the right direction to go from God's word. It says here in the note, I should stay as far away as possible from anything that, uh, that in any way resembles witchcraft. Yep, presumed contact with the dead is virtually always contact with satanic forces. Did you catch that? Did I say sometimes? Presumed contact with the dead is virtually always contact with satanic forces. Number 26. Why are the, the godly dead called blessed in Revelation? For Revelation 14, 13. Let's turn there. Revelation 14, verse 13. It says there, then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Wow. Isn't that a great passage? Notice the prophet does not say that they simply transfer their labors to heaven. No, their works, no, it says their works is done. Ecclesiastes 9.10 also says clearly that the reason all work ceases at death is because there is no work in the grave where man goes at death. Man simply sleeps in the grave till the resurrection. And when Jesus comes in the clouds of glory and he calls out all that have entered the grave, all the righteous will come forth at the same time. Isn't that fantastic? So they may rest from their labors. Then it says, what finally happens to the terrible curse of death? Revelation 20, 14. Go there with me. We're in Revelation. Let's go to Revelation chapter 20. And let's look at verse 14. What happens? Look at verse 14. Then it says, Then death and Hades were cast into what? The lake of fire. This is the second death. That's right. Do you know, you guys, you guys have stayed with me for an hour and a half through this whole study. Isn't this a great study? This is one of the studies that Satan will confuse people on that's why it's so important. Take this study, you guys, and know it by heart so that you're not going to be deceived by Satan, by spiritualism. In fact, we know from the heavenly sanctuary where Jesus is right now, there are two things, okay, that, that we study that other churches don't study, okay? First of all, we study the sanctuary message, the antitypical Day of Atonement. Because in the Day of Atonement, we find out something interesting, that the judgment started in 1844, right? Remember what I told you before? If the judgment started in 1844, how could all those people before 1844, way back to Adam, be in heaven if they were righteous? Because they can't be. The judgment didn't come till 1844. How do we know if they're alive or, or if they're righteous or wicked until the judgment comes? And we know the judgment. We remember... Daniel chapter 7, the books were open, the courts were seated, 
The Ancient of Days came in, 10,000, 10,000 angels, and then come the Son of Man, and the books were open. It was the book of life. It just happened in 1844. We're in the anti-typical Day of Atonement. Here it goes, you guys. We're going to finish this up. Death ends in the fire, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Okay, you guys, when you die, you sleep. And it's comforting to know that you can sleep. And when you go down, eight hours can go by like a snap of a finger. And it happened that quick. And that's what death is like. You're waiting till Jesus on the resurrection morning to raise you up. Then it says, and they'll be cast in the lake of fire. We've got three more questions and we're done. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 and 18. What does verse 18 say these words shall bring us? Right? What is Revelation 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18? For the Lord himself will descend with the shout and the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. We who are still alive will be caught with them to meet the Lord where? We'll be caught up with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so will we be with the Lord forever. Comfort each other with these words. The Bible emphasis is not on an immortal soul winging its way to heaven at death. As many have thought, the scripture is not focused on death as a, a means to go to heaven. Death is not a comfort. The focus of Scripture is always on the second coming of Jesus and the resurrection. And the greatest emphasis is on the glad news of Christ's own resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 26, it says, Because he rose again, all who sleep in him will rise again. What blessed comfort indeed. Then it says here, Comfort one another with these words. That was when Jesus, is coming, when Jesus comes in the clouds. But look at the next question. What inconceivably great power is promised to God's people today? What is that power? Look at Philippians 3. Go to Philippians 3 with me. Where is Philippians at? Where is it? Ephesians, Philippians Colossians, very good. Wow. Okay, so we're going to go to Philippians chapter 3, and let's look at verse 10. It says there, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Wow. Wow. says there, the power of his resurrection. It says here, what a joy to be reunited with friends and loved ones who died believing in Jesus Christ. Truly, the second coming of Jesus will be a grand and glorious event for those who love and serve him. Praise God. He offers me the same miraculous power in life that raises Jesus from the dead. How can a Christian fail with such fantastic power available? It is yours for the asking. You guys, this is a power that's not kept up in the kingdom of God. This is a power that could be in the kingdom of your own heart right now. He said, you ask. Then it says here, will you accept Jesus' offer to give you this resurrected power for victory in your life today? And what are you going to say? Yes. 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 More than you. I'll let you. Pray for me, man. I'll let you have it. <laughs> hey, what a great study, isn't it? Great study. I'll tell you what, you guys. Um. Wow, the life of Christ in action. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we thank you. What a loving God you are. Father, we have 
a group of people online watching and studying today with us about death and what Jesus is going to do to raise all of us. Thank you so much for your word and the power that you have given us in passages that, that free us from Satan's deceptiveness. Father, we know now that, that when you die, you go to the grave, to the dust, and that the, the breath, that spark that he gave you goes back to him, goes back to you. And we know that there's a, a, a multitude that we can't even count, like sands of the seas that's waiting for you to come and raise them in the first resurrection. Father, we want to be with you. We want to be with Jesus who died for us. I pray for those who are here today and those that are online will continue to search and know Jesus with their hearts so that when it comes time, Jesus will not say, get away from me, you, I never knew you. Oh, Lord, help us to know you with everything in us. Be with everybody today as we leave. Protect us in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Oh, by the way, you guys, I won't be here for two weeks. I'm going to Chicago. But I got the lesson. But you got to promise me something. You got to study this lesson, okay? It's entitled, God Sets a Date for the Judgment. This is really powerful. You're going to know about the judgment, what has taken place, and when did it happen, okay? Would somebody help me pass these out? Hey, you guys, you got to stick around because there's a program going to happen very soon. When does it start? Four o'clock. We're six, seven minutes before. So we're going to start right away. You might as well just stay in your seats. Huh? <laughs> hey, you guys, does anybody need one for a friend or need one for somebody else that hasn't been here? Okay. You got two of them? Okay. Did you get one? Do it. That's fantastic. They'll they'll love it. You know. Good. I'm glad they did. Yeah. I was. That's why I was at home this morning praying for this for the people here. But it's a long way. Don't worry about it because I'll tell you what. Uh, well, the thing is to get everything in and to show about the thief on the cross, about Lazarus. About, I mean, it's a lot of work. I'm talking to Kira. You're talking to Kira? Yeah, you have a problem with it? No, no, no. <laughs> I, would, I would never have a problem with that. 
that you're being sued this way. I'm going to put up a uh, thing for our baptism. Uh, try to keep her little peachy out of there. More explanation oh, no, I points, huh? Okay. Yeah. I said I had more than you. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, the screen's still in. That's good. Hey, that's great. Oh, that's that's easy. Wanted, I, that. I forgot the screen was still in. Yeah, I was in. I Do you want the microphone to be here too, buddy? Take the projector. Probably she said it'd be informal, so I'm assuming she'd be able to. Oh, okay. Say something when you push the button now. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Just thought we'd post it. 